Alright, so uh, hello YouTube. Um, today I'd like to continue the video that I started earlier on how to create a button in Windows.h. Um, so in this, in the last video we learned how to make a button and now in this video we're going to learn how to make the button perform an action. So right here we've got the same code that we used in tutorial 3 which is very similar actually to the um, the starting uh, project for a Windows.h uh, graphical application. Um, so all I've done is I've changed the title here to tutorial 4 and that's it actually. We've still got this from the second tutorial I believe it was and then we've got this button which we created in tutorial 3. So now what we're going to do is we're going to um, use this button to perform an action. What we need to do is in this switch uh, message, the switch case here, we're going to add another case. Case wm um, command colon. And now let's just add break here. All right. So what we got to do inside here is this is where the actual action code would be. but this uh, wm command gets passed whenever there's any sort of action so we have to add another switch case to differentiate the different buttons or whatever other actions could be sent with wm command so we're gonna go switch um, low word in capitals stands for lower order word w -ram. I think it's a capital P and just ignore that thing that's popping up and now inside here we have our other cases so let's let's make that button uh, number one so we're gonna put case one alright so you may be wondering now where this one came from it can be any number uh, 10 would work as well but what matters is that that number here corresponds to this parameter of the button so in order for this to work we have to modify this uh, function call here taking out the third last parameter we're gonna instead of having null there like we had before we're gonna change that to oh, bracket h menu all caps and then one so what it is is it's typecasting one to H menu basically and so long story short when I click that button it's gonna it's it knows that this is assigned the value of one this button it's our first button and long story short when I click the button it's gonna call this function with the parameter WM command and then inside that it's gonna pass this thing here which will equal one and then it's going to run everything that's inside case one. So let's just put a break there, even though there's nothing below it, so we don't really need it. But um, all right, so let's just demonstrate now that this actually works. We can do, for example, I haven't showed you this yet, but this will just demonstrate that it works. Message beep and be icon error. All that's going to do is um, make the computer beep. I'm not actually sure if you can hear that on the camera, but just in case, I'm going to add another thing which is mm, mess message box. Um, Hwind. I'll explain what this is in a later tutorial. I'm just gonna show it so that uh, so that you can see that there's an action being taken when the button was pressed. And MP. Okay. All right. So we've got that set up now. Um, 
So when I click this button here that was created in the previous tutorial, the computer is going to beep using this error tone. And after it beeps, right after, it's going to create a message box saying the button was clicked as its title, and it's also going to say the button was clicked as its body. Um, and I'll show you how I'll explain these later, but they're quite easy to set up. Notice they're in the global namespace, so you have to put colon colon, but leave nothing in front of it. Pretty sure that means global, actually, if there's nothing in front of it. Anyway. What? Oh, my bad. Wrong project. I had another one open. I forgot. Sorry about that. Let's just wait for this one to compile. Alright, so there is our program here. This is that debug window that pops up. If we click this button here, it should pop up a message box saying that a button was clicked, so let's try it. There you go. There's your message box, and it made the sound. You can click it repeatedly if you want. But if you click it again, it, it wants you to take an action on the message box first. And so yeah, uh, I hope you guys like this video. I'll just... Um, I'll show you one more thing you can do. You can do whatever code you want in here. So we'll just, uh, if we call post quit message from down here, for example, it'll terminate the program. So let's try that. Put post quit message there. And then we'll change this button so it says close. Oh, I have to terminate the program first. Uh, so we'll build and run. I changed my mind. I want to resize this to 100. Alright, there you go. There is our uh, window here. You can see the button smaller now because I changed the size. And if we click it, the program should terminate. There you go, the program terminates and this just stays here because uh, I believe it's called console runner. Yeah, console runner, code blocks console runner. It keeps it open so that you can see the output of your program. But like I told you in I believe it was tutorial one, if you build in release mode that won't be there so you won't have to worry about that. Um, thanks for watching guys, I hope this video helped you and yeah please comment if you have any questions if you want to create any more buttons um, all you do is you call create window again give it all the stuff that you want your button to say and the attributes and dimensions and then you would just create you call the next button two or three or four or whatever number you want within I'm sure there's an upper limit I'm not sure what it is and yeah, so then you would just put a case for case 2 if you had another button for 2. And yeah, that's all you have to do to take an action when a button's clicked. So once again, thanks for watching. Um, good luck.